We're going to develop some rules that will help us deal with exponents more easily. Let's start with an example. Let's say we want to see if we can find a simpler way of writing 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 5, to write it as a single power. Well, let's have a look what this means. 2 to the 3, you know, is 2 times 2 times 2, all right? So there is your 2 to the 3. And what is 2 to the 5? Well, it's 5 of those 2s all multiplied together, right? So over here is your 2 to the 5. Now, if we wanted to write it as a single power, can you see we've got to figure out how many 2s there are that are all multiplied together? Well, can you see you had three of them here, and then you had another five over here, and so what you have as an answer is you've got in total eight of those twos. So it's two to the power of eight. Let's have a look at another example. If we had a squared and we multiplied it by a to the power of four, what does that mean we have? Well, a squared is just a times a, right? So there is your a squared. And then you've got a to the 4. Well, that means you've got four of those a's all multiplied together. So there is your a to the 4. To write it as a single power, well, how many, really the question is, how many a's do we have? And the easy way to work that out is you had two of them here, and you had another four over here. So in total, you will have two plus four a's. In other words, you'll have six a's all being multiplied together. Nice and easy. And then this makes it very easy. If we follow this general idea, we can do it without having to do any of the extra work. For example, if I asked you, what is b cubed multiplied by b to the 6? You can go ahead and write it all out, but you can also kind of picture it in your head, right? b cubed will be 3 b's multiplied together. b6 will be 6 b's multiplied together. And so when you put it all together there, what will you have? You will have... 3 plus 6, in other words, you will have 9 b's all multiplied together. OK, they can give us something a lot more complicated to deal with. Let's have a look at this 3x squared y times 5x cubed y cubed. To deal with this one, let's start by writing out what exactly this means. Now, remember in algebra, when we write stuff, just next to each other like this 3x squared y, what we've done is we've just left out the multiplication sign, that there is actually a multiplication sign. So what you've got here is 3, and then, let's write that nicely, you've got 3, and then multiplied by x squared multiplied by y. And remember, if you've just got a plain old y, that's just y to the power of 1, right? And then you've got here 5, multiplied by x cubed multiplied by y squared. Now, because everything is just multiplied together, we can rearrange the order in which they are written. And it's very helpful to do this to try and bring together things that are the same. So let's have a look. We can bring together the numbers. So the numbers, we've got 3 and we've got 5. Then we can bring together our x's. So what we've got in terms of x's is we've got an x squared and then we've got an x cubed a bit later on. And then we can bring together our y's. We've got a y to the 1 and a y squared. So we've got a y to the 1 and a y squared. Now we can use what we've done previously to be able to simplify this nicely. Okay, 3 times 5, you know, that's 15, right? Now, you've just got to, had developed a rule to be able to deal with x squared times x cubed, right? Remember, this will be 2x's and another 3x's multiplied together. So what you'll have here is x to the 2 plus 3. And then... Same with the y's, right? Here you've got one y, and here you've got another two y's, and so what you'll have is y to the 1 plus 2. In other words, 15x to the 5y cubed is a nice quick, is a nice simplified way of writing this thing up here. 
Okay, so they can give you anything um, as d revolting as you want it to be. Let's have 2x to the 9y to the 5 multiplied by minus 3 x squared y cubed. Well, once you get quick at this, you'll see what do we need to do. We first look at the numbers and we say 2 multiplied by negative 3. That gives me negative 6. Then I need to look at the x's. I've got 9 of them here and I've got another 2 x's here that have all been multiplied together. So I've got 9 plus 2, which is 11 of them. And then I look at my y's. I've got five y's multiplied together here. I've got another three of them multiplied together there. So I've got five plus three, which is eight of them in total. We can develop another rule, which will also make things easier. Let's have a look at a to the power of five. And that whole thing has been raised to the power of four. So what this means is we've got a to the power of 5 multiplied by itself four times. So what will our answer be? Well, we know how to calculate. If we're multiplying the powers together, we need to add the exponents, right? That's just what we've been doing. So we'll get a to the 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 and that really what is that 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 well that's just 4 lots of 5 in other words 4 times 5 and so our answer is a to the power of 20. So let's have a look at another if I said what would be a b cubed squared well what does that mean it means b cubed multiplied by b cubed. So that is going to be b to the 3 plus 3. In other words, what you've got here is just two lots of 3. And so you're going to have b to the 6. Can you see a short way of getting to the answer would be just to say that what you need to do in this case is say 5 times 4 and in this case, 3 multiplied by 2. So, quick and easy, if you had c to the power of 4 raised to the power of 6, what you'd get as your answer is c to the power of 4 multiplied by 6, which is c to the 24. Okay, let's look at our final rule. Um, this rule is teaches us how to deal with something like, say we had x, y, z, and that was all to the power of 3. Now with exponents, you can always figure out the rule by simply writing out what the exponent means. So let's go ahead and write it down. What does x, y, z to the power of 3 mean? It means you're going to take x, y, z, and you're going to multiply it by x, y, z, and multiply it by x, y, z. And now we can just pull together the things that are the same. So you've got 1x, 1x, 1x. In total, what do you have? You've got 3x's that are getting multiplied together. And the y's, you've got 1, 2, 3 of them all being multiplied together. So you've got y cubed. And your z's, you've got 1, 2, 3 of them all being multiplied together. So you've got z cubed. So can you see the rule tells us that if you've got something or something, a whole lot of things multiplied together and they all raise to a power, that power must apply to everything inside. So if we had 3x squared y all to the power of 2, what you need to see is this 2 must go and apply to everything that's inside. So you're going to have 3 squared. You're going to take x squared squared and you're going to do y and square it. 3 squared is 9. x squared squared. Well, you know how to deal with those. 2 times 2 is 4. And this is y squared. OK, finally, I want you just to write these rules clearly into your homework book. So these are the three rules that we have gone through today. 
The first one is a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. The short way of saying this, if you're multiplying two powers together, you add the exponents. The next one we saw is that if we've got a to the m and that whole thing is raised to the n, well, what you do there is you just multiply the exponents. And then the last one that we saw was that if you've got a b to the power of n, that n applies to each of the things inside the bracket. Write these rules in your homework book now, and then you're going to get plenty of practice applying them.